I give all glory and honor and praise to the Most High, Yah, Yeshua HaMashiach. What I'm about to share with you is extremely important. Um, I had received this dream last Thursday, and I wanted to get it out um, before the Sabbath, but it just didn't work out that way. So, um, this dream, I want to say to you to listen very closely at what Yeshua has shown me and the understanding that I had received from it. Please forgive me if uh, I pause a lot while I am um, sharing this. I just want to give you the most accurate description of what was going on and um, be accurate in exactly how I felt. It is important that I do this. So, um, in this dream, I was with my daughter. And I knew that I was in the spiritual realm. There were a lot of people around us. It looked like a gathering of some sort. And everybody was mingling with one another. And um, all of a sudden, I heard a voice within the crowd. And it sounded like the voice of a female. And they were saying, can someone help me? Can someone please help me? You know, I need help. Um, anybody? And I knew by the sound of the person's voice that it was urgent and that they were looking for someone that had true spiritual gifts and specific spiritual gifts. Um, someone else started speaking to this person. I couldn't see either one of them. But someone started speaking to that person and saying, well, you can ask so-and-so. And I say so-and-so because I can't remember the name that they had um, said. So they're like, well, you can ask so-and-so. They'll help. So I'm listening to these two people and... They're going, I knew that from where their voices were that they were going through the crowd and they were searching for that specific person. And at that time, I looked at my daughter and I'm like, well, they could have asked me because I can help and I wanted to help. So my daughter and I began to walk through the crowd. We were trying to find um, those two people so that I can tell the person um, that I was willing to help. All of a sudden, everything became pitch black. I could no longer see my daughter. I couldn't see my hand or anyone. It was just pitch black. So you know how, you know, when things go black like that, when it's really dark, you don't walk with that much confidence. You are crouching over, being very careful of your footing so that you don't stumble or fall. So that's how I was walking through this darkness. All of a sudden, someone took my hand. I didn't feel threatened. It was a gentle touch. And I don't know if I heard it audibly with my ear or I just knew but I heard come, it was like come. So this person is holding my hand and they're guiding me through the darkness. All of a sudden the darkness clears and I knew my daughter was still with me. Um, as a matter of fact, when the darkness did clear, um, I looked at my surroundings and it was as if I was at um, the end of a hospital wing. It wasn't that brightly lit, but it wasn't dark. And I saw my daughter um, standing 
against the wall in the hallway. And this is to the, she was to the right of me. To the left of me, I saw what looked like an ICU unit. And so I walked to the entrance of this ICU unit and I saw a nurse standing um, across the room. She was doing something to some machines over there. And then I saw doctors and nurses surrounding the bed of a patient. And as I continued to look, uh, the doctors and the nurses moved back from the bed. And then I saw this woman. She had this dirty blonde hair. She was beat. Her face was black, blue, and purple. Um, she had deep cuts on her face. Her eyes were indescribable. Um, she looked filthy. Um, her tongue was wagging out of her mouth almost like in the way of a serpent and she began cursing at me and spewing out all types of obscenities I knew then that she was possessed with a demon um, a very powerful entity and She was looking straight at me. All of a sudden, this alarm goes off. And I knew that she had gone into cardiac arrest. I saw the doctors and the nurses um, run around the hospital bed and they were trying to revive her. I remember um, one of the nurses doing something to the IV and then she became stable once again. I knew that this entity was killing this woman and I also knew that regardless of how this entity um, was um, making me feel, I was there for a reason and I had a job to do. And the feeling that I had, the feeling, I'll say the feeling that was trying to consume me was fear, terror, horror, dread. Um, it was almost indescribable. Um, my body began to shake violently. And I remember clenching my fists extremely tight as if I was holding on to myself um, trying to keep myself from succumbing to um, what my flesh was feeling um, and I remember looking away from the woman she was hideous she was hideous and then on top of what I was feeling it was just crazy like my body felt like it wanted to flee but I didn't I stood there um, I looked across the, the room at the nurse that was doing whatever she was doing to the machines and then all of a sudden another alarm goes off but this time it was across the room and it was high up on the wall and the doctors and the nurses they immediately looked towards that um, you know where the alarm was and I heard one of the nurses say oh that's so-and-so's room they mentioned the patient's name but I didn't know you know I can't remember what name it was and then they ran past me and I'm left standing there in the entrance of this ICU, <laughs> ICU unit and so I knew that the entity had did something to that particular patient who was in another room um, possibly so that me and it could um, be alone and I felt the glaring looks of this entity I would not look at it I um, remember just looking at the floor my body shaking um, the intensity 
of the feelings that this entity was um, putting on me, um, trying to consume me with, um, trying to intimidate me. Um, it just, I mean, it was terrible. It was terrible. But again, I stood my ground. Um, I kept fighting it. And all of a sudden, I um, remember my hand raising up and it was my right hand raising up. And I realized that I had my Bible in my hand and I'm shaking. Um, and I remembered opening up my Bible and I was taking like chunks of pages at a time. Um, all of a sudden the entity caused my mind to scramble, you know, um, causing me to lose focus as to where I was going um, in my Bible. But I stopped and I paused and closed my eyes. I took a deep breath and I continued turning the pages. Um, the nurses and the doctors came back. And I remember one of the nurses pulling this entity over to the side and I saw her, I saw this woman's face. It was almost like um, a thick strip of skin was across her nose and her mouth. So it looked like she didn't have a nose or a mouth. And again, this entity was looking at me. So I remember looking back down at my Bible and um, all of a sudden I get to the book of Psalms. It was like I just took a chunk of pages and when I um, turned it, it was like I was at the beginning of the book of Psalms. So I didn't say this audibly, but it was almost like I said it. To, I said it to myself. It was weird because I said it to myself, but I heard it too. I'm sorry if I'm confusing anybody, but you know, I'm just sorry. This, like I said, this dream really, really um, rattled me. But anyway, I said to myself, "Now the battle begins." And then I woke up. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was so glad to wake up from that dream. My heart was racing and pounding so hard in my chest. I'm not going to lie. I was shaken. I wasn't scared, but I was shaken like, uh, uh, like an, it was like an adrenaline rush. Um, but I sat on my bed for like 15 minutes before I actually spoke a word to Yeshua because I had to wrap my head around everything that had just happened. Everything that I had just experienced because it was just so intense. And like I said, it felt so real. And I knew that it was only by the grace of Yeshua that I was able to um, stand in that dream because I did feel like my knees were going to buckle if I had given in to everything that my flesh was feeling. Um, this is an example of a house built on a rock. This is an example of being grounded in the word of Elohim. This is an example of having a true relationship um, with him. Because when we do, you know, we receive his power. We receive that power to um, overcome um, power over every wicked and evil thing, principalities, you know, as the word of Yah speaks. So I know that I was only able to stand um before this entity because of him and um i do believe that this thing was coming for my life but i was ready for it even though i was nervous because i was nervous because this was something new and this was something very different and i'm stressing this part it was something very very different and i have dealt with many different entities not just throughout my life, but especially um, ever since I had began my walk years ago. 
This is something extremely different. This is something that we all need to make sure that we are prepared for, but only Yeshua can do it. He is the only one that can prepare us for this. Not no man, nobody. Only Yeshua, okay? So understand that, you know, darkness is seeping in. It is a seeping in. And, you know, many need to come to terms. Many need to come to terms and, and have this understanding that we will come face to face with these types of entities. No man knows what day or what hour, you know, that the Lord comes. He's coming. Definitely he is coming. I feel it. And I know many of you feel it as well. But at the same time, you have a responsibility to yourself. You have a responsibility to yourself to be prepared for everything. Okay? Um, you may say to yourself, you know, some of you, um, I've casted out demons before. But like I said, I have casted out demons as well. And I mean, I have been up against some very terrible, powerful demons, but this, like I said, this is different. It's extremely different. It really is. And, you know, it's only by the power of Yeshua that you will be able to prevail against something like this because they will consume you they will consume your every being if you are that house that is built on a sand. I mean, excuse me, on sand. Um, the word of Yah is our foundation. Okay. Um, but not just that. I'm telling you right now that you better make sure that you are that house that's built on a rock. You better make sure that um, you better be taking time to really... Um, commune with your heart and and go before the Lord daily many times if you have to but you just better make sure that you are in true relationship with him okay Yeshua says his sheep hears his voice and you know those of us who are his you know at this moment you know they they know just like I know that this is truth like this is no joke what is coming is no joke and has already begun it has already begun so please just you know make sure that you are truly examining your heart make sure you're being honest with yourself the truth does hurt but you know you have to be able to face that man in the mirror in order to grow spiritually this is extremely important nobody can do this for you Nobody can do this for you. You have to do this for yourself. You have to be able to go before the Lord and face yourself. Repent for whatever it is you need to repent of. Don't follow the crowd. Follow Yeshua. Yeshua HaMashiach. Follow Him. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the Good Shepherd. Okay? So, with all that being said, um, Shalom. Um, one more thing. I do plan on putting out another video. This is extremely important as well. Um, I've been sitting on this for a little bit because I've been praying for more understanding as to what I've been shown. But I really feel that I need to um, share this dream now because of this dream that I just shared. So um, you all just have a wonderful day. Um, remember what I said, um, take this to the Lord, please. And like I said, examine yourselves, examine your hearts in Yahushua HaMashiach's name.